Hello everyone and welcome to a webinar on intelligent solution for conceptual PNIDs, plant asset management and maintenance. Today we are going to uh, look around uh, a solution uh, which is intelligent and smart uh, for creating uh, conceptual PNIDs to engineering PNIDs up to maintenance uh, uh, PNIDs. So before we uh, get started, uh, let us see about uh, our company. Titan Factory is a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, Nilsoft Group, which develops uh, process industry solutions from last 20 years. Based on object-oriented technology, its solutions uh, work on an integrated workflow processes and comes with built-in intelligence, integration, and customization flexibility. It creates a cohesive working environment and supplements your existing investments, keeping the total cost of ownership low. A little bit about the technology. Uh, our solutions are based on uh, object-oriented technology with a single database. It comes with uh, built-in PDM as well. Uh, its modular architecture provides uh, a real integration between various disciplines like process, piping, mechanical, electrical structures, etc. Anything and everything you do in Cadison is uh, object-based. Uh, so you have objects and object classes with the data and attributes behind it. Each object ha also has relationship with uh, associative or child objects. For example, a pump will have relationship with motor and instruments and so on. So this technology gives a uh, tremendous advantage of reusability. And uh, based on this uh, philosophy, uh, it is offering three solutions. Uh, one is project office which is a solution for project managers, which is again a non-CAD based system for managing the project uh, and uh, doing the cost calculations, etc. Uh, integrated engineering office uh, comes with integrated solution as well as standalone solutions for individual uh, uh, groups. And uh, also uh, it talks with, uh, uh, provides an enterprise wide solution which integrates with business systems, uh, thereby providing you uh, you know the enterprise wide solution so let us uh, today we're going to uh, focus only on pnid as a solution which is uh, again uh, based on this technology and as, as a standalone what benefits a uh, solution can offer for owner operators okay so everyone knows uh, you know pnid is a dna of, uh, of any plant uh, it is one of the document which is created and referred at every stage of a plant life cycle whether it is process, instrumentation, engineering, construction, operations, and maintenance, and with different purposes. For example, a process engineer needs information about specifications, media, calculation data, etc. Piping uh, engineer needs vendor data, equipment list, data sheets, uh, and various other reports. The procurement team needs cost information of plant objects, Operation staff needs as built asset information, etc. So owner operator have to modify and maintain uh, the updated PNID based on operational uh, or as built changes. Let's see, uh, you know, uh, uh, most of uh, the owner operators uh, also go through a lot of challenges. Okay, so these challenges, uh, what are those challenges? Let us see. Uh, this because they are still using CAD based system uh, and maintain PNIDs as a drawing. By using non intelligent or uh, standard CAD or graphic PNID solution, uh, there are limitations on the amount and quality of information that can be extracted from a system. So, let us see a few of the challenges uh, which are there uh, at various phases. Talking about basic engineering, uh, this is where most of the process engineers actually uh, start working on the conceptual level PNIDs and uh, however uh, there are systems which uh, are unable to give specifications data uh, they are not capable of doing calculations though so they have to depend on multiple systems also they have to maintain various versions of PNID as this is an iterative process or a phase okay and uh, updation or changing uh, PNIDs is a tedious job where they have to depend on the CAD draftsman okay so obviously the solution uh, ideal solution is object oriented uh, intelligent uh, solution which we are going to talk about which definitely helps in doing calculations doing engineering uh, 
uh, basic engineering during uh, uh, PNID stage or during conceptual PNID stage as well. Okay. Second is uh, of course uh, the prepared proposal or procurement team. Okay, where this team definitely needs a uh, lot of material uh, specifications. Uh, they need uh, cost uh, estimation information to do uh, the bid management uh, process. So they need a lot of procurement reports. They need uh, a lot of uh, asset information which they can actually plan their long lead items, buyouts, etc. So these are the challenges uh, which which is uh, faced by procurement and pre bid team or proposal. Uh, talking about engineering and design, of course, the challenges are uh, more where they want error-free uh, PNIDs. Data consistency is a huge challenge again in this phase. They have to do a lot of uh, design iteration. So you need a system which can handle uh, the change management in a very effective way. You need a system which can do built in revision control or uh, reports or you know you can configure various types of reports. So these are a few of the answers to uh, these challenges. And lastly, uh, the operations and maintenance uh, team. And this is the team who needs uh, updated information at any given point in time. So maintaining and updating PNIDs is a very crucial part of it. Okay, and that's where the object-oriented solution helps in uh, easy modification of uh, all the utilities or plant objects and any changes due to operation uh, or uh, due to maintenance should be updated in a PNID so that you have uh, as built PNIDs all the time and you can actually uh, look PNIDs as a, a good asset information source rather than just a PNID drawing okay so let's see uh, you know uh, what this uh, PNID solution is all about uh, object oriented PNID solution so uh, we're going to talk about uh, the calculation capabilities the spec driven um, what exactly the spec driven or a smart PNID solution is and how different it is from the other solutions we are also going to talk about uh, the revision management and change management for error free PNIDs so these are a few of the, the benefits which you are going to see in the live demonstration now so let us see uh, what the system is all about Okay, so as we have talked in the presentation that uh, uh, we are going to go through the quick demonstration of Carison PNID Designer. So we have gone through the different phases of uh, plant life cycles where PNID drawings can be used such as in PNID at concept or feed or basic engineering as well as PNID at pre-bid or proposal, then PNID at detail engineering, construction and PNID at um, as built uh, or we can say it as a asset management information. So we'll see all in different phases of plant life cycle what type of different reports we can extract from our PNID drawings and we'll also quickly go through some key features of Cadison PNID designer. So our we will first talk about our uh, PNID at concept feed and basic engineering. This is one of the sample uh, process flow diagram, which has a, a couple of processes, blocks, as well as uh, which is connected to different medias. Uh, it's a uh, process flow diagram for alkaline extraction uh, project where uh, there are different processes are going on, starting from mixing, testing, dissolving, and um, sedimentation as well as your uh, extraction of alkali. Now uh, we can extract quickly the different types of reports during our concept and basic engineering. So first on your right hand side you will have your Cadison tree from where we can see what are the different medias or services which are which is used in my uh, project and from there my project area we can extract the media list either in Excel as well as in uh, different other formats. 
so we can add to our document folder and the media list will be generated so here you can see that different attributes can be populated and can be extracted to your drawings such as media number description chemical formula and the pin added drawing which is associated with it you can also have a revision document also for the media list so whenever you are doing any update in your drawing that will be automatically updated to your reports also as we have gone through the process flow diagram the same process flow diagram will be used to create your pnid drawings so we have document folders for all the pnid drawings which has the medias or process which we have already created in our process flow diagram so we can also extract the pipeline list for our concept and basic engineering life cycle where we can extract the reports based upon our pipeline list so you can see the pipeline number reports with all the different pipelines process media pipe material or insulation thickness is even with the pin id drawing number has been added to your reports as we have done for the pipeline list similarly we have lots of bulbs in our pin id drawings so we can extract the valve list also based upon the different types of valves available in my pin id drawing So again, we can go to our pin added drawing, go to report folder and can quickly extract the reports. There are predefined templates for all the reports are available. This is some of the different types of reports which you can extract it using Cadison PN ID. So you can see the for wall data summary we have media information valve description with the tag number type of valve with the end conditions and other specification related uh, values with the pinary number is added to your reports other type of report you can extract is your instrument lists so you can go through the different types of instruments and his and its information can be available using object inspector dialog box so there are different types of instruments can be created whether it's a, it's a measuring point or if there is an instrument for a safety ball so you can extract the instrument list reports from pnid drawings so let's say select the instrument list report template and your instrument list reports will be generated. So this is something like we can quickly and uh, easily extract the reports based upon the objects available in the PNID drawings. These reports are uh, fully configurable. You can add or remove any properties from the report template, which is required as per your project requirements. So you can see tag numbers, um, drawing numbers, different in information related to your instruments is available in your report format all the instrument information with the supplier model number types is available here. now there are a couple of special uh, component or special items will be there in your PNID such as your coupling compensator or maybe a strainer uh, pulsation damper so these are all special items you can generate the reports for your uh, special items also which will have different templates and different attributes will be available so this is a report for special piping components item names type of component with a tag number size all those values will be populated even the quantity also can be generated Lastly, we have a 
couple of equipments available in PNID such as sedimentation tank or filter press. So we have reports for vessel list also because in, in basic or concept engineering we generate the vessel list also. This is a predefined equipment list available with all the tag numbers, description and specification details with the drawing number is available. Now we have seen the PNID at a concept or basic engineering uh, phase. Let us go through the PNIDs and how the different types of reports can be generated at pre-bid and proposal level. Once our concept engineering is done, during my pre-bid, we can have a couple of PNIDs. Right, right now you can see there are four or five number of PNIDs available uh, on your screens. And uh, during my pre-bid phase, I want to generate the list of pre-PNIDs, list of PNIDs for our pre-bid or proposal engineering. So we can generate based upon our document folder level, we can generate a report for list of PNIDs. And you can have the reports in the Word format as well as in Excel sheets also. Here you can see the description of your PNID drawing, drawing number, sheet number. If it is revision, you can get the revision number as well as the creation date. So this type of reports you can quickly and easily create it at any level, whether you want it at the drawing level, at the document group level, as well as at the project level also. We have seen during the pre-bid phase the list of PNIDs. Now let us quickly uh, see the equipment list for all the PNIDs at the document level. I'm sorry, document folder level. We can create the reports. So we'll go to vessel list Excel report form of template, and we can say that this is a pre-equipment list, which is for pre-bid or uh, proposal level. And based upon the number of PNIDs, it will generate the equipment list, which consists of the, all the tag numbers for the equipment, description, the different equipment specifications, capacity or, or volume, design conditions also. Now, one of the important uh, report format during our pre-bid is data sheets for the equipment or for the pump data sheet. So for example, we have a sedimentation tank with a tag, with a tag number uh, B3205 and it has all the uh, relevant information is there in your PNID and we want to generate quickly a data sheet for this equipment. So again, uh, uh, on my right hand side, we have CADIS entry where we can filter out to our equipments. So I will just filter out to my sedimentation tank and we'll generate the reports by selecting a sedimentation tank there. So it will add the file name for DS data sheet for B3205. And based on that, our data sheets is created. So you can see it is showing the, all the relevant details of your project, first of all, that is the location, project number, what service it is flowing, the item code, the data related to fluid, fluid state, capacity and specificate, specification details of equipments and material of constructions also. You can also have, based upon the data sheet template, you can have a nozzle schedule where all the information related to nozzles can be also seen in your report of data sheet. So this is a simple example that whatever data or information there in your binary drawing can be automatically extracted to your report formats, formats based upon your project requirements. Another important document during our pre-bid and proposal uh, engineering is your cost estimation. 
So let us quickly take an example that you have number of valves in your PNRE drawings, different types of valves, and we have to quickly do the valve cost estimation. So if we select a valve, we have an uh, attribute known as list price. So this list price can be uh, either taken it from a vendor catalog or it can be added manually or we can import the Excel sheet format or uh, to add those list pricing. Once the list price is added to an object, we can extract the reports for the uh, cost estimation of the walls. So if I go to my project level and at my document folder, select the drawing and go to the reports. We have a report template for proposal wall cost report and we'll generate the report in Excel sheet format. So once the wall cost estimation is generated, it will not only show the costing, but all the relevant information for the walls, such as area description, area codes, item tag number and cost related to that. Even the quantity can is available to you. So this is a sample uh, report template for cost estimation and this is fully configurable based upon your project requirements. You can also see the total cost of the um, uh, once the wall cost estimation is done your total cost value will be added to your sheet. Next, we will quickly go through the PNID at detail engineering and construction stage. Now, in, in detail engineering, we different types of reports are once again generated, such as your final list of PNIDs at project level. So we can go to the project level in your Cadison tree. And we have seen a lot of uh, PNIDs documents are available. We have PFT drawings, media distribution drawings, and uh, different PNID based upon process uh, uh, in your projects. So you can go to your project level and select the template for list of documents and can generate the reports for final list of PNIDs. So this is a word, word template for the reports. You can also have the Excel sheet template where you can see the description of your PNID drawings, drawing number and uh, the creator as well as the creation dates. This template can be configured and can be, you can create your own uh, custom properties can be added there. Now once the list of PNID has been finalized, you can create based upon different PNIDs, you can create final list of pipeline list So again, I can go to my project level and can generate the reports for pipeline list. So this is the final list of pipelines, which has all the relevant information for the pipelines, media, media code, installation thickness, what PNID drawing consists of the, uh, the pipelines. Next. You have final equipment list, so based upon the different PNIDs in your project. Before that, we will uh, see through the uh, final special component list available there, based upon different PNIDs. So you can see for the couplings, all the items are available: pulsation, damper, strainers, side class, all the special component list with its tag number, material, and sizes available. Now we will quickly discuss about the last stage with, of PNID that is as built or asset information management. During the uh, plant design, uh, we every project had different types of tagging systems, such as you can see, uh, we have different tag, tagging philosophy in this PNID for pipelines. We have tagging system different for walls as well as equipments also. So 
by default there are two different types of um, tagging systems available in Cadison. one is standard and another is kks tagging systems can be changed based upon the project requirements and uh, users can add their own tagging requirements as per the project requirements so how to configure the tagging philosophy for a pipeline or for a, a different types of objects available in your pnid so well, let us quickly go through one example if i edit a pipeline in my cadism tree we have a property which is known as device tag with plant id this has a formula which shows that pipeline tag number has been created from two attributes one is the plant number and the code using do these two properties we can create our pipeline tagging this is one example in the same way the tagging for other objects such as equipments balls or instruments can be created and can be formalized based upon different attributes as we are talking about asset information and as build so these pnids can be used throughout your plan life cycle and it can be used as the maintenance documents for example if you have uh, different n number of walls available so you can quickly select it the walls in a tree and can zoom and highlight in your pnid drawings so if you have a com complex pnid drawing objects from a tree can be selected and can be quickly highlighted and zoom to the area in your drawing such as for the instruments you can select it from your cadison tree and can zoom and highlight to your graphical area next i would like to talk about when we are talking about asset information and its management we have a bidirectional links of cadison pnid with erp interface where all the pnid with its standard items can be stored in the cadison database and from where cadison database the properties or attributes can be linked to the um, erp projects such as your material desired delivery date suppliers etc and in erp we can add more information related to projects such as pricing order confirmation etc which can be bring back to our cadison database as well as your pnid drawings so this interface gives you gives a, a advantage where all the data from the pnid can be uh, bring back to our erp systems that so that can be used for procurement teams and then procurement teams can give their data or information Uh, back to the cadison database which can be used uh, bring and it's bring back to your pnid drawings and you can generate the reports based upon the project requirements now as we have gone through the different uh, report types of reports uh, which we can extract it using cadison pnid designer starting from concept pre bid detail engineering as well as as built and uh, asset information management let us quickly go through uh, key features of cadison pnid so that how quickly and easily you can create your smart pnids so first i will talk about media pipe specifications and different types of calculations so in your pnid you can create multiple media that is services which will be flowing through your pipelines which is visible from your cadison tree you can see n number of media is available each media you can associate with its piping specifications and the piping specification will be added to your pipelines so pipelines will have all the relevant information which is coming from your piping specification such as your size 
your material and other relevant information. At the pipeline level, you can do your sizing calculation. So in order to size the pipes for optimum economic requirements, Cadison PNID provides a new feature to conduct the pipe sizing calculation, which accurately estimates the pipe diameter, pipe thickness, and the pressure drop in the pipes. The pipe calculation feature utilizes the resistance factor method to calculate the parameters. So you can provide the inputs such as inside diameter and other pipe relevant inputs and you can calculate the outputs in terms of pipe diameter, pressure drop and the minimum required thickness for the pipe. Based upon the inputs, you can calculate the sizing calculation for the pipelines. Now, as we have done for the piping, same thing, we can do it for the pump sizing also. So, Cadison also provides a feature for pump sizing, which facilitates appropriate selection of the pump. Pump sizing calculation performs hydraulic calculation for centrifugal pumps and estimates differential head, hydraulic power, motor power, as well as net positive suction head available. So you can provide all the pump information such as your density, vapor pressure, pump efficiency, and you can provide inputs for suction side as well as your discharge or pressure sides. And based upon that, your output will be available. That is your uh, total differential pressure, pump power, net positive suction head. Next is the construction set, which we call it as an assembly manager. So construction set is something like uh, you are creating an assembly of uh, uh, objects uh, which is uh, connected to your pipelines. So we'll take an example here. We have a small wall assembly which is connected to a pipelines and inline objects such as coupling with hose. And we want to place it at the top of your pipeline. So using construction set tool, we can quickly select the graphical area which you want to place it as assembly and we can provide for which standard we are taking this assembly we can provide the insertion points which will be used to place this construction set and we can give some naming convention to this uh, construction set or assemblies let's say i'm giving as a valve assembly Zoom option will provide you a graphical uh, area which will be seen in your library. So once the construction set is created, that will go to your object manager, which is a Cadison library. And you can ha have all your different types of assembly will be available in your object manager. Now, Let's quickly place it on the above pipeline. So from our Cadison menu, we'll select the object manager, which is an assembly manager uh, here. And we'll go to our construction set option. We'll quickly drag and drop our assembly. Now the beauty of the software is this is not an overall assembly. These objects are placed individually with the updated tag numbers. So you can see the tag numbers has been updated and these individual object reports can also be generated. So this construction set is a uh, assembly which is not only used in a current project but it is saved in your library and can be used for further uh, uh, in, in future in different projects as well as uh, in the current project with different drawings also. Next, we will talk about change and revision management. So during our PNID creation or during our plant life, life cycle, we have different types of changes 
occurs uh, based upon the um, graphical changes as well as value or attribute changes so we are taking an example that we have a uh, couple of valves multiple valves are available different types of valves and how quickly and easily we can edit uh, some properties for a valves so if you see there is a ball wall whose couple of values are empty such as if you go to our manufacturer value and type value both are empty so how quickly and easily we can update the mass updates in our pinari drawings so we can quickly select the overall drawing using edit object command and we will get automatically a spreadsheet which will have all the entities selected in our drawing we can filter out to our walls using object class name and again we can sub filter it based upon the wall description so here i am selecting ball wall <coughs> excuse me now i can see there are seven ball valves available with its manufacturer and type value empty now the question is how we can quickly add those values to the manufacturer property and type property so we have an option that we can select the property name using fill and number option we can give property value one at a time and automatically the values will be updated for all the valves same way we can we can do it for the type property so you can see the values has been updated in this in this way if you have suppose 50 or 100 valves you can select all the valves you can get this spreadsheet and using fill and number option all the values will be updated <coughs> to verify it we can select the one line of the wall and we can zoom and highlight to your drawing where we can check whether the wall property has been updated or not and you can see once we edit the wall the manufacturer value and type value has been updated now after the changes has been done this changes will be automatically updated to your reports also so you don't have to create a new reports if you go to your reports folder using cadison tree all documents you can go to your reports folder and you no need to create the report you can just update the reports it will automatically create a revision of your reports where you can provide the revision text such as your manufacturer value updated and you can have a revision of your reports also so once the valve data summary is extracted you can see for the ball valves the manufacturer value gf and type 546 is updated in your reports and also a revision a has been generated for the reports so this shows the revision management also once the change has changes has been done in your drawing your revision of the reports will be generated automatically now now comes the revision of your drawing once the changes has been done in your drawing we have an option to create a revision table where you can have a new revision for your drawings we can provide some description to this drawing and once you click okay your revision will be added to your revision table near the title block so you can see the initial revision has been added so how to verify my drawing is revised or not if i go to my documents all documents in cadison tree if i filter out based upon all documents and revisions and once again i will go to my pinari drawing in my cadison tree we will have a revision of your drawing with the description also that is the initial revision who has done this revision as well as the date so this is a small example that how the changes takes place in a pinari drawing and how it quickly and easily you can update the changes in your uh, pin ids and that will be updated to your uh, reports 
as well as your uh, revision of your drawings also now once the drawing is created you you have to annotate it or uh, you can can designate it based upon the properties uh, for your objects and you can generate and legend sheets also let us go quickly uh, through the object designation and legend sheet command so object designation command is used to provide annotations to the objects placed in the pnid drawings this designations or annotations can be configured and can be saved for the further usage so you can see right now equipments have some informations and we can create some typical text mask so we have predefined text mask available even we can create our own text mask templates and can add to our library so here we can select using the graphical option we can select the object and the text marks will be created based upon the template so you can see for the segmentation tag tag number and other technical data specification data is available in the same way we can we are going to do it for the steer also from my library we can quickly select the template and using graphical option text marks will be created here here are the quick some examples of the text marks which is already created and these types of uh, text marks you can add it to your pnid drawings this is the default template but you can customize the text mask template as per your project requirement next is we have different types of object designations are available and you can configure it and save it for the future uses so using the common object designation command you can select the object to provide the annotations and can configure it based upon the properties required for example for a pipeline i am taking my tag number as first as a sub plant that is plant code then uh, i am taking the media number and we can provide the free text also then the piping specification and let's say the last one as the counting number that is the pipeline number so once my formula is created for my annotation i can click ok and i can provide the text size whether we want to place the orientation of the text horizontal etc and we can apply it to our pipelines so you can see based upon the formula used my plan code media specifications and the line number is uh, counting number is added to my pipeline uh, in in my pnid drawing in the same way we can quickly annotate for the, to the other pipelines also and based upon that my value is updated now the beauty is that uh, if any change is done in your pnid drawing this annotations will be automatically updated you can add as many attributes from your uh, object designation to different uh, objects such as you can annotate annotate it for your equipments or for inline fitting such as walls also now once your pin id is done uh, we can quickly generate your legend sheets based upon your pin id drawing we have a default legend temp sheet template or is available and based upon the drawings or the objects placed in your drawings the legend sheets will be created and all the uh, object symbols with its descriptions can be added it as a legend so you can see all the components which is used or symbols used in your pnid drawings it will create a, a block which will contain the symbols with its descriptions also next is index sheets so index sheet contains the list of the drawings present in a document folder or a document group so we can quickly create a new drawing and we can provide a name as index sheet we can open it and we can place a title block and border which will contain the list of pnids used in during my project 
this is an empty uh, title block and border and from my uh, library i will select the template for the index sheet and will select the list option where i can browse to my document folder or document group where all of the my pnids is available for the project so once i select the document folder for the pnids and will click ok it will automatically extract the list of the pnids as an index sheet in my drawing so you can see the title number serial number um, drawing number if revision has been done and remarks can be played now other thing is that if any drawing or pnid drawing has been added to the document folder this index sheet will be automatically updated so for example i am creating a drawing and giving the name as test pnid you can see the index sheet is updated automatically with the the title and the serial number if we edit anything to the sheet number let us say 007 and the description i have changed it to the test pnid and that will be automatically reflected to the index sheet so this gives you an advantage that you don't have to once your index sheet is created you don't have to create it again and it will be automatically uh, updated based upon the new drawings added to your document folder lastly i, I would like i would like to talk about the logic analyzer logic analyzer is a quality checking tool which helps user to check the logical errors in your project it provides a wide range of check routines so this logic analyzer is available at the drawing level as well as as your project level also so we have we can have we have this logic analyzer at both the levels let us take an example and we we executed at the drawing level and we want to check the duplicate tag numbers for the equipments so these are the predefined checklist available or you can say um, logical error checklist is available you can create your own rules and add it to your logic analyzer table now here we are going to check test an example of uniqueness of equipment codes or you can say if if there are any duplicate tag numbers for the equipment is available it will automatically check it so we will select it for uniqueness of equipment codes and click ok here we see that there is no uh, checklist is available because we don't have any duplicate for the tag numbers now let us quickly test it for a couple of equipments we have two equipments one is an autoclave and another one is sedimentation tank so what we will do is here we will change the tag tag number for autoclave with the same tag number which is there for sedimentation tank and we'll save our drawing and we will quickly run the logic analyzer to test for uniqueness of equipment tag numbers or duplication of tag numbers so we select uniqueness of equipment codes and we'll see that the description that the device tag of this device is not unique and it is showing the same tag numbers for both the equipments now what we can do is we can select one of the vessel and edit the vessel here only we can change the tag numbers which was firstly it has been defined and we can close this dialog box you can see in the drawing that change has been updated now again if you quickly run the uh, logic analyzer and that logical error uh, has been removed so in this way you can check your pnid drawings based upon any error such as uniqueness of pipeline tag numbers valve tag numbers or equipment tag numbers or if there is any um, mismatch for your pipeline sizings or if you, you can also create your own rules uh, based upon your project requirements and add it so that you can do perform your quality checking uh, once your pnid is done so this was all related to the uh, different um, key features of garrison pnid uh, there are different types of applications which can be used from intelligent and smart pnids first is training so when plant is in operation and existing users or process engineers 
knows about different plant areas, media, pipelines, and other specifications because they are working on it. Now, if any, any new process engineers joins, so in that case, Cadison PNID can be used to get the training to the new team of the process engineers and they can get the get familiar with the existing plant operating conditions in terms of uh, sub plant areas what media is flowing through different pipelines and use new users can actually zoom and highlight with the objects so that they can get familiar with the existing plant which is in operation second application is as built so typically there are a lot of changes happen in plant life cycle uh, or, or during plant operation. Now challenge is how this chain management should go, go smoothly and different disciplines can have the updated data. So here PNIDs can be used as as built document or can be used as maintenance document from which you can get the updated data in form of different reports. Third application is uh, legacy conversion. So the migration or conversion should help organization automatically migrate application to modern and open technology and database management systems. So here Cadison PNID can be used as maintaining all your operational assets such as your old plant data, drawings or different uh, specification details can be make them into an intelligent format. And the last is HAZOP. So an important element of any system for the prevention of major accident is conducting a hazard or you can say operability study at the detailed design stage of the plant in general and the operating and safety control systems in particular. The hazard process is used to identify the potential hazards and operational problems in terms of plant design and human error. So in this case, Cadison PNID can give you the list of medias, pipelines and other drawing details which are relevant values in terms of reports and which will help in our HAZOP processes. That's all for today's webinar. Thank you for attending this. If you have any queries or concerns, please um, put your queries on the comment sections or you can contact us or you can get the details on below uh, email addresses. Thank you.